this morning, we ask it early with CBS News Business and Economics correspondent Rebecca Jarvis here to answer some of your personal finance questions, which you've sent in to us. Love being able to help our viewers by having you here. Great, Good great morning. to be here. Okay. So our first question comes to us from Matt, and this one's actually on camera. Matt? Hi, Rebecca. My name is Matt Neely. I'm from Seattle, Washington. And my question is this. Do you have a quick and easy formula to determine if we're saving appropriately for our children's college education? Always good to think about that question because the earlier you start, the better off you are. Savingforcollege.com is a great website. They offer calculators so you can put in your very specific personal information and get a good outcome for yourself. But as a general rule of thumb, Vanguard, which offers 529 plans, these are the plans people should be looking for when they're saving for college. They say if you put $100 a month into that plan for 18 years, you'll come out 18 years later with about $40,000 for wow. college. So there's something as a general rule of thumb for people to consider, but of course, it comes back to your own finances as well. You gotta figure out what you can do and, and don't neglect your own retirement, we hear a lot. Exactly. Uh, our next question comes via Twitter from Erica, although it's Erica with a K, but we're gonna let it slide. <laughs> and she writes, what's the best way for individual investors to invest in gold? ETFs, bullion, futures, rings. I don't even know what those things mean. <laughs> well, ultimately here, these are a bunch of different ways for people to consider investing in gold. And a lot of people are talking about gold now because it keeps hitting all-time record highs day after day. One thing for people to consider, ETFs, that's an exchange-traded fund. This is one of the easiest ways if you are an investor like someone like you or me, Erica, who's not a big-time investor, who's not trying to play Wall Street, an ETF will allow you to invest in gold without too much trouble. And one that people should check out is ticker symbol GLD. Now, if you want to buy physical gold, here's what you have to consider. First of all, those commercials you see late at night saying, buy our gold, we've got the greatest gold. Well, it's really not necessarily the greatest gold for people to buy. It's gonna cost you more money. So go to the US Mint website if you wanna buy physical gold. They list some more reputable gold dealers and okay. double check those dealers with the Better Business Bureau. But keep in mind, if you're buying physical gold, you have to pay insurance on it and you have to pay for storing it because most people store it in a bank in a safety deposit box, so there are costs involved. So I would say most people should look at exchange traded okay. funds, that's the best. Yeah, you don't wanna put the gold bars under your bed probably. Not that's right. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, this next question comes to us from Lee, a question about working on your credit. Hi, my name is Lee Cummings. I'm from Rio, Brazil. I currently reside in New York, and my question is how can I build my credit fast? Best thing to do, pay your bills on time, pay off those balances, and make sure once you do pay off those bills and pay your balances, don't close the credit cards. Because the more credit cards that you have and you maintain as open, the better off your credit looks. Because people are looking at how much credit does this person have available when they look at your credit. Even though it feels counterintuitive. Yep. Uh, lastly, this comes from a college student wondering how to make sure she can save enough money while in school, uh, which hey, just saving while in school is a good goal in itself. This is Katie. Hi, my name is Katie Finnegan. I'm from San Francisco, California. And my question is, what is your number one money saving tip for college students? Don't take on credit. Don't swipe the credit card because what happens with college students is oftentimes they'll swipe the credit card everywhere they go and all of a sudden they come out of school, they have their college loan debt, but then they have credit card debt and it's so high interest rate that it piles on and it really depletes the savings. And it's hard too because it seems, I, I remember at least when I was in college, they almost prey on you. Their the credit everywhere. card companies are everywhere trying they to get you everywhere. to sign up for that card. And it feels like free money. It makes people feel like they have this uh, new level of independence, but the reality is, is that once you become dependent on a credit card, the bank is in your pocket and they will continue to take it from you as long as you have taken and swiped that card. Great advice.